Kung Fu is a way of life for many Chinese people. It provides entertainment, exercise and religion. For some, it also provides a living. These two young men are film actors in Hong Kong. They are planning the choreography of a fight they will perform in a Kung Fu film. Their teacher, Master Chan, supervises to make certain that in their search for excitement, they remember the strict tradition of the art. However spectacular the action, it must conform to what the Chinese audience recognizes as good Kung Fu. The use of fighting techniques as entertainment has always been part of the tradition of Kung Fu. The spectacular battles of the Chinese opera made an easy transition into the Kung Fu films for which the Hong Kong cinema is famous. The Chinese audiences understand the differences between techniques and are excited by the skill of the performers. The fight sequences are like ballets. The aim is not just for the hero to win, but for him to defeat his opponent with elegance. Kung Fu students may perform the lion dance. This dance has been a part of every Chinese celebration for centuries. Even in sophisticated Hong Kong, the custom is still very strong. No shop can be opened or building completed without the lion and his orchestra to bring good luck and cast a favorable atmosphere over the event. On this occasion, the dance was performed on a local police station's fate day. The lion is cautious suspicious of the crowds. It has to feel safe before it can eat an offering of green food, usually a lettuce. Beneath the lion's head, tossing the lettuce into its mouth with his feet, is a senior student of Kung Fu. He is the leading performer of the dance in his master's Kung Fu school. The school charges a fee to perform the lion dance, and the money is shared out among the students. The schools that have lions which are known to be lucky and that perform well can earn useful amounts. The reputation of the master of a kung fu school depends partly on the quality of his students' lion dance. It's the custom for masters to delegate much of the teaching to the senior students, but Master Chan enjoys involving himself in it. It is a long and complex dance. Each movement of the dancer controls different parts of the lion. The dance is designed so that when the mask is placed over the dancer, his personality vanishes and all his actions bring the lion to life. <laughs> Kung Fu appears to be fundamentally a Chinese activity. There is an important Indian aspect to it. It's from India that the religion of Kung Fu came, and perhaps some of its fighting techniques. 
From about 400 BC, the ancient roads between India and China were used by Buddhist monks. Some of the Chinese monks found their way to this historic city of Kanchipuram in South India, and one of them is carved into stone in a 7th century temple. On the wall beside him are carvings of figures in fighting postures, probably the oldest detailed records of martial arts that exist. The kings of Kanchipuram held the Chinese monks in high honour and a 6th century king built a line of pagodas in front of this temple as a memorial to a Chinese monk who was his friend. The journeys were not all one way. It is probably from this same city that an Indian prince set out to travel to China. He is now known as Bodhidharma, the founder of Zen Buddhism. He is revered by martial artists, and throughout China and Japan, his portrait hangs in the training walls. The legends say that he travelled by sea and land into the heart of China, to a Buddhist temple built in a huge valley under the mountain that the Chinese think is at the centre of their country. Shaolin Temple is now mostly ruined, but it does contain large frescoes painted in the 18th century that give an idealized picture of Chinese and Indian monks practicing martial arts together. Bodhidharma is given the credit for encouraging the monks to learn martial arts. He thought that in their untrained state, they were unhealthy and lacked the strength to meditate. However it came about, there is no doubt that this mixture of fighting and Buddhism is of major importance in the martial arts today. Then, as now, men learnt destructive fighting skills balanced by the peaceful morality of Buddhism. For much of the time, the monks were able to live in peace, but at least twice they fought to help emperors to the throne of China. Many times they were closed down by emperors who feared their fighting skills. Each time that happened, they went underground and spread throughout China. From China, the art of Kung Fu has travelled to Chinese communities throughout the world. The techniques are still practised in mainland China to a high standard. However, it's in the Chinese communities outside the mainland, like Hong Kong, that the full range of traditional activities still exist. Some of these are associated with the triads the secret Kung Fu societies that organize criminal activities, protection rackets, prostitution and drug smuggling. Of course, this is not true of all Kung Fu masters. Master Chan is an upright member of the Chinese community, highly respected for his charitable activities. He hasn't missed a Rotary Club meeting for 20 years. Like so many Chinese, he starts his day exercising to receive the benefit of qi, the life-giving energy of the world that they believe is especially concentrated under trees in the early morning. He came to Hong Kong from South China about 60 years ago and learnt Kung Fu when he arrived. He is typical of the best of his generation of masters. He starts his day at about five, always exercising in the same place. He returns to his surgery and opens for business at about six. There are always likely to be patients who damage themselves during the night and who need repairing before they go to work. The shops around him don't open until about ten. Master Chan is famous for his skill as a bone setter and his ability to ease painful backs and soothe bruises. His surgery is a typical Chinese room, cluttered with the souvenirs of a lifetime. From here, he maintains a constant telephone link with his friends throughout the colony. Since he's lived in Hong Kong for so long, he knows everybody. His influence is much greater than his apparent status. The 
training hall of his school is beside his surgery. It has all the normal equipment found in a Kung Fu school, including the dummy man, who is attacked by all the students in turn. This is the school's most senior student of Kung Fu, who also works as an assistant with the patients. So he's studying the complete tradition. As well as him, there are always several non-fighting students working with Master Chan to learn medicine. Chinese people are always anxious about the after effects of even minor bruises and sprains. They believe that if such injuries are left untreated, they will cause worse trouble in the future. Master Chan's medical techniques are those of traditional Chinese medicine. He uses warm poultices and oils made from about 50 ingredients. Several large businesses and banks retain him to look after their staff. moves of Kung Fu are the same for all the systems. But one of the problems of studying the art is the proliferation of different styles. There are several hundred named schools known to exist. Master Chan belongs to the Hung Quen school, okay. the style that teaches the traditionally elaborate techniques. Okay. Most of the older styles of Kung Fu have many weapons techniques, often using military weapons. They are a reminder of the days when martial arts schools were the centers of rebellion against the usurping Qing emperors of China. From 1600 onwards, the secret Kung Fu societies organized rebellions that lasted for years and tied down huge armies. It's these revolutionary societies that have dwindled to the triads. In today's weapons training, there are many decorative flourishes which have no combat use but they instill confidence in handling the weapon and intimidate opponents. The exercises are not all decoration. These upward cuts are designed to attack the softest parts of the body from the angle least protected by armor. Master Chan feels that Kung Fu is bound to lose students to the more organized fighting arts and that the traditional ways of teaching are inadequate for the modern world. Because 我給銀子你,你就要教我手套給我,就不是說尊重,尊師重道呢,沒有教師更緊要。一齊,一腳。
in life. Traditional oh. Chinese teaching is very informal. Yeah. Students wander in and out of the training hall and practice as they will. The master instructs when he feels like it, or leaves it to the students to train one another. Master Chan teaches much more than many masters. There is no profit in Kung Fu for Master Chan. His training hall takes up valuable floor space at expensive Hong Kong prices. He recoups his losses by business acumen. He rents the whole ground floor of this building and runs several businesses in it. On the street, there's a prepared food shop and a tobacconist. Behind, there's a tailor's. This was the first trade that he learned when he arrived in Hong Kong about 60 years ago. He has three children, a daughter and two sons. One is a surgeon, practicing in New York. The other runs a travel business neatly fitted into the gap beside the tailors and behind the food shop. Essentially, Master Chan sees the perpetuation of Kung Fu as one of his duties to the Chinese community. In most Kung Fu styles, there are many long, elaborate forms to study. The long sequences of fighting moves include sections which take their names from five animals, or the five elements. These long set forms are a point of dispute amongst those who study Kung Fu. The critics say that they are more of a dance than a preparation for fighting. Those who believe in them say that they teach concentration and stamina, and above all that these forms contain the spirit of Kung Fu. It is a hard external art, the opposite of the soft internal arts like Tai Chi. In Kung Fu, the energy comes from the tension that is held in the chest muscles. In Chinese terms, the body's chi is raised from the stomach to the chest. There are even sections where he has to pretend to be drunk, to deceive an attacker for a moment. Yao 一扣打得一扮一上上 Say 
在插腿啊！借用嗰度插炮锤呢，就係借用空猛過嗰個虎虎形，學呢，即係等於虎學完呢，跨錘，長，一錘，腰腳，跳，係嘛？系嘛？腳啲拳分埋咗啦，上嘛？一錘，腰，變奶，揸實起嚟嘅。It's only in the last few years that the Chinese have been prepared to share the secrets of kung fu with other races. Chinese masters are opening training halls outside the Chinese areas of cities and welcoming students rather than reacting suspiciously to inquiries from outsiders. In London, Master Simon Lau has taken over the top floor of an old church to teach the Wing Chun style. His approach is very different to Master Chan's. <laughs> There is no doubt that Wing Chun is focused on training fighters. Compared to other styles, the techniques are direct and obviously powerful. Master Lao has only recently opened his school. None of the students shown here has had more than one year's training. It's a style that the enthusiastic student can become effective in very quickly. Wing Chun originated in southern China, but it has been developed over the last century in the narrow alleys and back streets of Hong Kong. Its techniques concentrate on lightning fast bursts of close quarters combat. Wing Chun is a very gentle art. It looks like very gentle art. It doesn't look like powerful art. But the power is internal power, more, more or less like soft and hard mix them together. Soft power and hard power mixed together. And you don't have to like a six foot five or six foot and have a physical big build to learn the hard style as such. So even your slim build or medium build, as soon as you've got a mind to put into it. Because Wing Chun is mainly is come to the skill and technique to overcome the power. There are only three set forms in Wing Chun, and all are short. This is the first form. Its purpose is control, and in this form, the exercise develops the ability to move one side of the body independently of the other. All the moves are used in Kung Fu fighting. There are strikes, grips, and rolling hands that twist and control the attacker's arms. Whenever you learn martial art, you must have know how to polish your weapon as such. We're using the punch and these three knuckles. There's a punch. We're using this as a knife hand and attack from that one. The other side, palm strike, elbow, knees, mainly heel, the bottom part of it. And it's a major part of the, our, the Wing Chun weapon. Using the dummy man allows all the techniques to be used strongly. It hardens the performer's arms, training him to expect and accept the pain of his blows. From the art will be transformed your character, your personality. If you're a lazy one, 
you're uh, the sneaky one, and you're the coward one, whatever is good. All from the art, you will transform your own personality and your character from it. And that would be one point. And the second point, you, you know exactly where you are, then you know how far. If you've been defeated, you know you're, you're not there. You know if you'll be defeated in the club, you'll be got hit in the street. One, two, three, four. The essence of Wing Chun five, is speed. Double punches are flung out almost simultaneously. Five, and the students are taught to one, keep their hands relaxed five, and unclenched five, for all but the moment of contact. A little bit faster. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let it go. Oh, faster, yeah? Try once again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you turn, make sure the punch go with the turning together, yeah? You turn and you punch. You turn the punch together. Yeah? Don't go like separate, like this. You're turning separately. Okay, let me try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. During the club, practicing in the, in the, in the club, more violent they take, more violent they're going to act. Only physically violent, not mentally. The physically got to be aggressive, but mentally got to be controlled. You see? So that would be a totally different thing altogether. From the beginning, the student might be have temper. That means they're mentally our control. The te that means they have temper, they're very aggressive-minded, and yet their physical ability is not up to the standard of what they might want to do. Until they take the punch, until they got a hit somewhere, if they are the person who really want to learn self-defense as such, and then eventually they get up to that standard. When they're good at it, their mentally will be cooled down because they know how confident, confident they can handle people, but their physical got to be extremely aggressive. And yet they know exactly what they're doing. Wait, that's better. Hey! That's the elbows in. Hey! Elbows in. Hey. Hey. Mustn't relax. Guard a bit more high than that. Mustn't let it loose. Yeah? Back! Head and mustn't bend forward. Forward. The way they move is very limited. The like the rolling hand, the hand they roll, the hand they roll back, the way they move, it is is the it is the method to fight. They only practice those movements. The muscle used to those movements is for fighting. Really, it's not for uh, sort of a competition or anything like that. And then from time to time they build it up. It is the muscle contracting and relax, contract and relax, and contract and relax. And eventually they get the heat and power, which is you don't have a big build and then you don't make a big move to, to develop the, the, the deadly skill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. The movement when you go into rowing the hand there got to be a bit more on the side. 
not straightforward when you're pulling forward, yeah? When you're opening, the distance is too close of it, you don't have to move forward to attack. One. Two. Again. One. Two. And again. When we fight, we don't have rules. We don't have, we have no rules. Because we train for real self-defense. Self real self-defense, I mean real fight. When you have a real fight, you have no rules. There are no concessions to the women that study here. They're expected to stand up to the sparring with the male students in preparation for actual fighting conditions. Chun was the Kung Fu style that Bruce Lee started to learn when he was 13. He was in Hong Kong then. His full development as a master was after he moved to California. It was in Los Angeles that he began his film career and at the same time worked out his theories about the fighting arts. He taught many people, but he shared his deepest thoughts with very few. One man who worked closely with him still teaches Bruce Lee's approach to fighting in his Los Angeles gymnasium. Bruce Lee called his system Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. Although he was a film star, he was a creative master, one of the men who have kept the fighting arts developing throughout the centuries. Those men who worked closely with him consider that he was a genius. He made Dan Inosanto think again about all that he had been taught about the fighting arts. Dan Inosanto doesn't teach Bruce Lee's revolutionary theories to everybody. What he looks for in a student is quick thinking and an openness, a flexibility of mind. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is what we're going to do. One set on the right, one side on the left, okay? Right hand push up, ready, begin. Let's push up Although Jeet Kune Do is based on Kung Fu, it uses many other techniques as well. It even incorporates Western boxing into the Eastern fighting arts. The students are taught to fight ferociously, and yet to be sensitive to their opponent. They must feel out his technique and respond to the energy of his attacks, taking it over and using it against him. Bruce Lee taught that the response to attack can be to use a technique from any fighting system in the world. It's a combination of East and West, and there's neither J Japanese or Chinese or Okinawan or Korean or, or Filipino or Indonesian, or which he also borrowed from French Savat quite heavily also. See. So it's just a combination that, that somebody had something to offer, and he wanted to, to blend it into what worked for him. So Ji Kune Do, uh, Bruce's art, is basically what works for that individual. And it still goes back to what we're talking about, research your own experience, absorb what is useful, useful and reject what is useless and add specifically what is your own creation. Bruce never taught us forms and we're probably the only non-classical Kung Fu style that has never been taught forms. And according to Bruce, uh, if you taught forms, you'd be, it wouldn't be the mechanics. Okay, if you notice a lot of Chinese sets, they'll go like this, right? And they'll go like this or they'll go like this and they'll go like this and then they'll do it with the left hand, see? Bruce was against forms because you don't know what it's for. Why not just practice it like this and break then hit the groin and hit the face and hit, rather than practice it like this and not know what the meaning is for. For instance, if I go like this, why not practice? Rather do it in a set, why not practice what it's for? Rather than do it in a set like this, do it in a set like this, and the student doesn't know what, he, what, he, what he's doing, okay? The basics over here is that you have a front barrier and you have a rear barrier. So once the, the kicking range has been closed, and it usually is closed very quickly, we trap the first barrier. This is referred to as pox sal. Pox out. Okay. okay. Now, depending on his energy, 
he will come out with maybe as many as 12 different types of te techniques, depending on how much force he is given. This is called lopsaw guachoy, okay? Guachoy, okay, from the position, okay? This is what we refer to as, as trapping hands, okay? Now, if the energy is different, this is what we refer to as a double pox out, okay? Okay, when you do this, it's your choice. He can go into a bent elbow lock, which is right here. He can, at his choice, go into a straight elbow lock, which is straight down like this. He can, at his choice, even go into a choke, depending on what he so desires, okay? Or he can, at his choice, if he prefers to, after he does the pox out, lops out, guachoy, turn into Western boxing, jab, cross, back fist, uppercut, and so on, depending on his choice, okay? He can, at his choice, even go into another right. Let's say he went the pox out, double pox out. Okay, he can, at his choice, maybe go into a partial elbow lock, okay? Hook his right hand over his head, go in the collie type of combinations, if he so desire, okay? With the knee to the head, okay? Now, let's say that I had a low reference point here. This is what they call uh, a pinchoy to guachoy, okay? From that position, okay? And he can, depending on his energy, right? Go into lopsided guachoy from that position, okay? But this is the basis of it, see? There's not a lot of technique because the technique goes by his sensitivity, okay? Let's say he does a pox out from this position here and the hand is grabbed, okay? He can wrist lock that arm and he goes down, okay? So it's not, is it grappling? Is it choking? It, it doesn't matter. You, you go according to the sensitivity he gives you. If you, if you limit yourself to a, a particular style, then you have to solve it. For instance, if, if I did a pox out, Wing Chun would go like this. It will sometimes go straight, okay? There is no, maybe, I can flow into Kali from the position here, because this is the, the foundation that Bruce taught us, that it doesn't matter what art and where you take it from, you just flow accordingly to the, to the structure of your body. So it doesn't have to be. And I think that's where the great fall in the world is. They think it's a Chinese. It is a Gung Fu style because its roots are found in, 50% of it's found in the, in the Wing Chun system. But he went out of it. There is not like the movies where you see the uh, give me a, a hook kick and a cyclone kick. It is, it is nothing something like, like this. Let's say we go like this. and This stuff that you would see, very seldom Bruce would use. In, in all the confrontations that I've seen Bruce, in actual confrontations, I've never seen him do any of this at all unless he's just playing around with the man. Okay? So all this high kicking and flashy kicking is, is usually out. For an example, right? This here, if he grabs my hand, Bruce would just go stop. That's good enough. See? But you see, as Bruce said, what is spectacular for movie is not usually practical for the street. And what is practical for the street is very dull for a demonstration. Who wants to see a guy go pox out, he grab and he stop and he headbutt, see? Or you hit up. It's not, it's not spectacular enough, see? But now the, the spectacular stuff, of this stuff here, it attracts the audience, right? But it's not where the art is at, okay? This is where... We are where Bruce said he was violently against. Bruce said that you had to have something between East and West. And I think in the Orient, they tend to be over-secretive, uh, over-flowery sometimes, and hiding a lot. See? If you're secure in your knowledge, you don't have to hide it. Why hide it? You can just bring it out.